anybody know about God's grace and His mercy brought us through as we enter into this portion of our worship service. Just want you to focus on the goodness of the Lord, how good He's been, and allowed you to come out to this service and to lift up the name of the Lord. Uh, what a wonderful uh, worship song. Your grace and your mercy has brought us through. As we go into this time of silence, I want us just to focus on who God is in our lives and that you are alive. If you don't mind, could you just reach down and pinch yourself? Some people can't pinch themselves. They can't, and they can't feel that pinch. But just the fact that we can pinch ourselves lets us know we are alive and God has blessed us. Let's focus on the Lord. Praise you, Lord, we worship you. We welcome you, God. Thank you, Lord. Another time of praise you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Oh, God, we love you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We worship you. Oh God, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. God, speak to us, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy Father, 
thank you for giving us voices that we can worship you, that we can use our voices as instruments with melodies and harmonies, lifting you up, God. Thank you. Thank you for the fellowship of the saints. Thank you for worship. Thank you for your presence. Lord, you have done great things and we bless who you are today. You are welcome in this place. Thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. As you're on your feet, if you would grab those hymnals with me, please, and open them to 286. 286, our youth choir has chosen a special hymn for us today. 286, a very powerful word. The Lord will make a way somehow. Any, any witness in the house? The Lord will make a way somehow. 286 in your hymn books. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, I wonder what I've done that makes this race so hard to run. And I say to my soul, take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. You quiet.
Lord will make a way somehow. At this time, we're going to have our youth moment and ask our leaders if they come forth and lead us in time to our young people. We thank God for the wonderful and talented youth that he has blessed us with here at Ebenezer. All you who would like to say Bible verses, please come up and line up on my left hand side. Jesus said unto his disciples in Matthew 18 and 5, And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. So let us receive them today with encouragement and love. Christopher Howard would do the prayer for us today. Christopher. Let us bow our heads. Dearly Father, thank you for this day. Please let everyone who does this prayer remember it and do it well. Lord, to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Will the congregation please sing the Philippians 413 proclamation song with us? And it is written to the tune of Happy Birthday. I can, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for whosoever believeth he shall not perish, but had everlasting life. So I praise it to him. Therefore, humble yourself upon the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your cares upon him, because he cares for you. It comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 7. The Lord is my shepherd, and my son, and my salvation. The name of the Lord is a forfeited tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. It comes from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. For the wages of God... For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ. Jesus, Jesus our Lord, Romans 6.23. Be anxious for nothing but in everything but prayer, supplication, and let your request be known to God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to speak with boldness the mystery of the gospel. It comes from Ephesians 6, 19. The time for everything is the time for everything it has done on this all. Ephesians 3, verse 1. I will draw the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my back. No weapons forms against me shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. This is love for God to obey his command. 1 John 5, 30. Amen. 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 Amen.
for you have rained glory down on us from heaven. That's from Psalms 8, verses 1. Do not withhold good from whom it is due, if it is in the power of your hand to do so. It comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. Do not, forget my do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart. They may prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Buy them around your neck and write them on the table of your, of your heart. Then you will win favor and good sight of man and God. It comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Lift up your heads, O oh, you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O oh, you gates, and lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Psalm, Psalm 24, 7 through 10. I just pray to Jesus. My son, do not forget. My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them around your neck. Wait. My son, okay. My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them around your neck. Fasten them, um, them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you're awake, they will speak to you. It comes from Proverbs chapter, wait, verses 6, verses um, 20 to 22. <laughs> And now, Ms. Smith will bring us one of her wonderful devotional meditations. Let us receive her now. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about a day in the life of Sparky. Sparky was a man who was going through a few things. He went to a bar, got him a drink sat there and stared at it for a while. He just stared, just stared. Then up comes a biker. Sometimes they can be kind of mean. Look kind of like Hulk Hoeing a little bit. Came in there, took Sparky's drink, gulped it down in one swig. Sparky looked at him. The Bible looked at the man. He said, what you gonna do about it? And Sparky burst into tears. He said, oh man, I didn't think you would cry. He said, I hate to see a grown man cry. What is wrong with you? Sparky began to lay it on the line. He said, I have been having a bad day. This is the worst day of my life. I went to my meeting late. The boss fired me. Went out to my car. It had been stolen, for the, and I didn't have any insurance. Then I went home, and my wife ran away with the gardener. And then worst of all, my dog bit me. Then, you came in, you biker came in, took my drink, swigged it down. But, you don't know the whole story. You see, when I came in, I was feeling kind of bad. I opened up the capsule, poured it in my drink, the poison salt. And you drank it all up in one sweep. Now, enough about me. How's your day going? <laughs> you see, that's how it is with us sometimes. We are going through trials and tribulations. But remember, 
God is always there. So, when you get down and out, call on Jesus. He's the only one that can help you, no matter what you're going through. And don't park in your situation. Because God, Jesus, will bring you out. Thank you so much for listening. You may return back to this. Here in Ebenezer, we like to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. 
If your birthday anniversary is today or through this Saturday, please stand and be recognized. My dad returned in 92. Right. All the first my dad returned in 92. Glory to God. Amen. Well, happy birthday and happy anniversary. Um, we ask that you have a great day and a blessed week. This is this one is another. So much for the pre for those announcements and to our youth leaders did an excellent job. Can we give them a hand and fire? <laughs> As we prepare for our grace of law today, for our first time visitors, this is our time of giving. Uh, God has been blessing us so much here at Ebenezer. We found out that we can be cheerful givers according to the scriptures. Uh, each time that we give, we try to give a scripture when uh, we can. And today we want you to open up those Bibles to Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. I want you to look at around that first verse. Exodus 31. 1. The section is about the artisans for building the tabernacle. And we're going to talk about that God gives us gifts. And we're going to compare that to our lives and what He's done uh, for us. So open those Bibles. Exodus chapter 31. I'll look around that first verse. Genesis, Exodus. All right, Exodus 31. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Basileel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to design artists artistic works to work in gold in silver in bronze in cutting jewels for setting in carving wood and to work in all manner workmanship look at that third verse again and i have filled him with the spirit of god in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, and cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. Very powerful scripture because it lets us know whatever gifts, talents we have, it's from the Lord. Oftentimes, and God blesses us, we can get our uh, education and to get degrees and get all of those things, and sometimes we can get the mindset it's because of my training. It's because I studied for this degree. But please know, if any success comes in your life, 
is because God has allowed you yes. to be able to do that. Never take that for granted. You may have a voice that people like and you're able to sing. Don't think it's because of you. You didn't choose that voice. God gave you that voice. I traveled over the world, around the world, and I, I found out that people sing differently in different areas. So what we might like here in the United States, they don't like it over there. So this whole process, we need to think what God has given us. Uh, if God has given you the ability to read well, don't take that for granted. There's some other people that can't read well. But when we put all those gifts together, look what happens. God is glorified. In the same respect, that's why we can be free givers. Some of you have wonderful jobs. God has blessed you with that. Don't take it for granted. There are other people that were smarter than you. Amen. There were other people that were smarter than you that deserve to have the job you have. But because God's gifts and talents and skills, he allows you to be in that place. To be honest, some of you are not even skillful at what you do. You still get paid. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start messing. Up. I really just want you to think about what God has done. And however he's blessed you, don't take those talents and skills for granted. And if he blessed you to make money, praise the Lord. Be a free giver. Maybe he didn't bless you in that way. You can open up doors. You can reach out. But God has helped us all to give in some manner and be cheerful about it. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your scriptures. I search the scriptures over and over again, and I find so much about how you freely gave to us. Thank you for the opportunity today, but not just on Sunday, but every day of the week, to be givers of you. You've been good. Thank you for the skills, talents, even those that are here and says, I, I don't, I'm not called to do anything. I don't have any skills. Let them know, Father. Let them see. It's those little things that you can... Um, make bright and illuminate that can bless people. God, we're, we're just so thankful for you. Would you move on our officers and give them understanding. Thank you for how you just adding to the church as you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we've got our uh, youth offering helpers will be today. Morgan Goins and Jakira Moore. Uh, if they would come forth along with our officers, we've been truly blessed today. Uh, we kicked off our 8 o'clock service. A wonderful turnout, and we're back here just lifting up the name of the Lord. I'm going to have so much Jesus these weeks, I tell you. If I go wrong, it's going to be nobody's fault but my own officers.
service but still recovering um, God brought a miracle within his life they thought he was having a heart attack but his arteries were uh, still open and one that was 50 percent blind uh, God had uh, caused the whatever veins to recreate a, another way to go around lift up our cancer survivors we've got some cancer survivors in here uh, we've got some that are just getting over chemo and um, had some other things to go on. We want to lift them up. And we want to pray for souls to be saved. Amen. In this violent day. Does anybody know that? And we're living yeah. in a violent yeah. time. I want to pray for souls to be saved and God just to work in their lives. So as a little mechanic comes forth, we're going to pray for her. And I'm going to ask you, would you stand with her today to encourage her as she comes forth? Brooke, would you come forth and, and pray for us?
Now, Lord, as I pray so often, 
that if someone is not saved here today, that you would help them to believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ, your Son, is Lord. And Father, you have raised them from the dead, and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's nothing that they can do, but it's by grace that they're saved, not of themselves. It's a gift of you. Thank you for that wonderful gift, Lord, that you chose us. Uh, that is a wonderful reality. Now, Lord, I come before you. I bring my infirmities, my issues, my hang-ups, my sins. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. According to 1 John 1 and 9, Lord, I thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive me of those sins and cleanse me. That is so such good news. So therefore, I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Would you teach us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us into all truth? Would you make this word so plain, so easy to be understood, that even a small child can be transformed to be like you? Holy Spirit, thank you that you never failed us. So Lord, I ask you to be in my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. We need your anointing yet again. Speak to that tender part of us, Lord. We want change. We just don't want to come to church, but we want change in our lives. Make us more like you. Please, Lord, make us more like you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 6, uh, looking at that 22nd verse, it reads, And when Herodias' daughter herself came in and danced, and pleased Herod and those who sat with him, the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. Okay, that 22nd verse and when Herodias' daughter herself came in and danced and pleased Herod and those who sat with him, the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. I want to speak from a subject today. What is your price? What is your price? If you could rhetorically just look at your neighbor and maybe you don't have to answer this, I just want you to think about it. Uh, so whoever is your neighbor, look to them and uh, you can ask this question. Say, neighbor, don't answer this, but I do have a question. What is your price? What is? What is? Um, as we go into uh, this message today, uh, I must we'll try to keep it at least at the PG-13 uh, section simply because this is a fun portion of scripture as we get in. And many times I've shied away from it, but it seems like God is just speaking uh, to my heart, at least for the day, to deal with this section of scripture. Uh, Jesus is well into his ministry. He's been healing the sick. He's been raising the dead. And because he's been doing so many miraculous things, our people have been overwhelmed with God. But just with some being overwhelmed, there were others that did not like God or did not believe in God. And so they made excuses for the miracle. I believe today as we think about our lives, some of us have had miraculous things happen to us, but we made excuses. Some of us think that our deliverance has been because of a doctor. Thank God for using doctors. Some of us believe that our deliverance was because of some wonder drug. And uh, some of you are naturalists. You think that bark that you uh, grind it down and put in with a little bit of honey and some ant heal mesh. You think that that healed you. But it really comes to God and His grace and His mercy. And He kept you alive. Because of that, there's much that's going on in Jerusalem, in this area. The Romans are in control. They're uh, doing their thing. And so they've set patriarchs or leaders in different providential areas to be under the main king. Today we pick up in this 14th verse, and it's actually a, a flashback of sorts. Because Jesus has been doing so many wonderful things. Uh, one of the kings of that time, he hears about what's going on. And he flashes back to something that he's done in the past. Now, if I can interject here, I want you to begin to think. Because some of you have done some stuff that you haven't repented of. You actually did those things and you forgot about them. God in his grace and mercy, he didn't kill you then. He could have killed you. But because time has gotten between you and the sin, you're living in this grace portion. But you never repented of that sin. 
There ought to be some amen. There's some folks that are in the house today that are dressed up real nice. You got new hair and your fingernails are done. New suits and pants. You took a, a nice long shower this morning. There's some stuff that happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and you holy and sanctified now, but you never repented. Other folks remember the stuff that you did, but you've gone on, and sometimes it takes a flashback to get us in right standing with God. 14 verse of that 6th chapter. Now King Herod heard of him, for his name had become well known. And he said, John the Baptist is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. In essence, Jesus is doing all these miracles as said before. And so Herod, he hears about this, but he does not give glory to Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He said, it's got to be John the Baptist. You remember John the Baptist was the predecessor of Jesus, who baptized Jesus, who told everyone around, I'm not even worthy to unlatch uh, his shoes. I'm not even worthy to touch his feet, in essence, he was saying. So now that Herod hears all these things, he said, it has to be John the Baptist, because I remember I did something to him. Evidently, that John the Baptist rose from the dead, and he's doing all these miracles, signs, and wonders. There's something about your past that can plague you. Some of you do have flashback. Those old flashback comes out in feeling guilty. Uh, some of you are doing some stuff, and, and you can be leading folks, but all of a sudden, you'll have a flashback of guilt. There ought to be some amens. We can, we can be quiet if we won't. But some of you have guilty consciences. And the reason you don't want to be involved in church is because of guilt. You don't want anybody to find out what you did years ago. But please understand, that is the way the devil comes at us. He wants us to hide from those issues so that we can never be delivered. So here, Herod, at this point, he's saying, it, 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 it's not Jesus. I hear about that. This must be John the Baptist, verse 15. But then he goes on, or others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is the prophet or like one of the prophets. We don't understand it, so what we do, we attribute it to something that we have a reality of. Some said, uh, we remember uh, Elijah. Uh, he, he did miracles and signs and wonders. It must be resurrected, Elijah. Some said, no, he's, a, he's another prophet. Remember, they, they did, Elisha did all kinds of, of wonderful things. And, and Jeremiah, he had prophetic words and taught the people as the weeping prophet. It must be one of them that's resurrected. But still at this point, they weren't willing to accept Jesus Christ, the anointed one. What is your price? Oftentimes we run and we go here and there trying to get relief from everybody else, trying to go to the past for relief when we need to come to the one who's of the past. He's the present and he's the future. I'll give you a scripture. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. Your peace will never come until you take it to Jesus. No therapy, and thank God for therapists. No, no drug, thank God for drugs. None, none of that is going to fix you. You can talk to your girlfriend. You can talk to your boyfriend. You can sleep around here and there. You can jiggle and wiggle on Saturday and Thursday. You can do all of that, but it will not bring you peace until you confront where you are to Jesus. What is your price? Look at that verse 16. But when Herod heard, he said, this is John, whom I beheaded. He has been raised from the dead. In New King James Version here, we see that exclamation mark. We see Herod now is trembling. And he's going, it, it has to be John the Baptist. It's not Elijah. It's not one of the prophets. I don't even think it's Jesus. It's Jesus they're talking about. It's got to be the one that I killed. I, I beheaded John the Baptist. And, and now he's come back to hunt me. Now he's come back to plague me. Now, please understand, some of you have done some terrible things to people, but they're not going to come back to plague you. Uh, they're not going to rise up and follow you around. Uh, get over that. Please know it's just your conscience. It's your mentality. The only one that's going to confront you is the spirit of the living God to give it over to him. And sometimes our mind can play tricks with us. And now we see this King Herod. He said, it has to be John that I keep. See, there was no repentance that took place when he beheaded. And now he goes back to this flashback and we get the whole story of what happened. 
For Herod himself had sent and laid hold of John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. What is your price? Now, this is an amazing thing. I'm um, Herod being in, in rulership. He could do whatever he wanted to do. He could marry whomever he wanted to marry, but there's a problem. Uh, now he has married Herodias, but he was warned of something because Herodias was his actual brother's, Philip's wife. Now, now this is amazing. I, I don't know all the details in the story, but evidently Herod and Herodias had gotten together and had a fling of some type. And, and Her Herod fell in love with Herodias, but the problem, she was already married. Or maybe they were singing something, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. He got around town. And, and so uh, uh, Herod wanted to make this thing right, but she was married. So somehow he takes Philip's wife, Herodias, and marries her. Notice verse 18. But the prophet comes, John comes, because John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. What is your price? Isn't it amazing when God will confront you? And we're living in a day and time people want to be so politically correct, they don't want to talk about sin. No, everybody's doing what they want to do, and they just expect folk to just accept it. But I've got 66 books, and it tells us how to live, how we're supposed to live. It tells us how our leaders are supposed to lead. And there are many times things must be confronted. If we were honest with ourselves today, some of you need to be confronted with your sin to let you know that is wrong. Even though you know it's wrong, you need a mother to come up to you or a daddy in the church to say, that's not right. I love you, but God is not. Not please. John the Baptist was that one. He goes up to Herod and said, it's not lawful for you to do what you need. Even though everybody else was okay with it, God was not okay with it. There ought to be some amens in the house. Even though you can get a license for it, if God is not okay with it, it's not okay. It doesn't matter if it feels good to you. It doesn't matter if everybody is happy for you. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. Just because you can divorce it, just because you can get rid of it, just because you can pay it off, does not make it right in God's eyes. What is your price? Amen. We see at this point that John confronts him and said, this is wrong. And essence, he was saying, get out of this. God is not pleased. You are a leader. You should not be doing this. You're giving me a wrong example. But Herodias gets upset. Now, this is amazing because it would seem like Herod would be the one that was upset. But Herod had already gotten a word and knew that John was a mighty prophet. It was the woman, excuse me, ladies that are in the house that got upset because it seems that the pusher of this relationship was not necessarily the King Herod, but it was Herodias that got tired of Philip. There ought to be some amens. Oh, this is an amazing thing. And, and gentlemen, I often speak to the ladies, but you need to be careful over the pushy females that are in the house. You need to be careful over those that are pushing and throwing themselves at you because it could be a setup. It may not have been about Herod at all. It was about his position. Herod was probably an ugly man, but he had a lot of money, and that made him beautiful to grow. What is your price? Now, Herod had gotten caught up in this, and now this word comes from John. Herod doesn't know what to do. Verse 19, therefore Herodias held it against John and wanted to kill him, but she could not. What is your price? In, in essence, um, we see that, that Herod, he, he took the word. He didn't make any changes or difference in, in what he was doing, but it plagued him. Every time he would look at Herodias, he would think about the word of God and say, man, this is wrong. We, we, we shouldn't be in this relationship, but he did not change anything. But Herodias realized something's changed now. See, when truth comes and attacks your untruthfulness, your sin, you can't rejoice in it. We 
when you get a word that's spoken to you that this is wrong, you can do it. But if God speaks that word, you are plagued with it. So every time you do it, God is speaking in your heart that is wrong and you feel bad. So what you have to do, you have to numb yourself. You have to drug yourself up. You have to uh, obliterate the things that are around you. And you have to go into sin. And you already know that it's wrong. But you're trying to cover it up. You're trying to come to a point. But God has already spoken the word. And Herodias is upset. So Herodias is thinking in her mind now. What we got to do, husband. I, I, I understand that this is wrong. But if we kill the prophet. Then it will become right. If we get rid of John the Baptist's husband, and then we can live, and the people will accept it, and they'll, they'll not know that it's wrong, and we can actually say that which is wrong is right. Are there any witnesses in the house? Doesn't it seem like we're living in a societal standard that people are chained in the room? No, no, it's, it's not just a, a matter of right or wrong, but it's about people trying to make wrong right. It's about people redefining and tearing out scriptures and leaving out pieces in part and saying this is right. So Herodias in the scripture said, if we kill it, if we kill John the Baptist, then we can be free. Oh, there's so many people trying to kill the word of God so they can be free. But this is a living thing. You kill one page and another page pops up. You take down one preacher and God will raise up another preacher. Oh, you get rid of one elder and God will raise up a child. You get rid of a whole bunch of people and God will use a donkey. Y'all ain't any angry man in the house. You can't get past it. What is your price? Because John has said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. She's upset. Let's kill her. But she couldn't. That was a covering over John the Baptist because his time was not up. And also we see Herod here, he feared John the Baptist. Yes. When you got a word, and some of you can understand that, when the anointing, you don't want to mess with folks that got a word. You don't want to mess with people who are saved and sanctified and walking like the Lord because it's bigger than them. They got a big brother that's walking with them and talking with them. They may not look like anything, but the word is anointed and powerful. And the king said, hold up, we can't, we can't touch him. Yes. What is your price. Now, look at this next verse as we look at that. Herodias is upset. Verse 20. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just and holy man, and he protected him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. Now, this is important. What is your price? Uh, actually, there was a protection that God worked through Herod to protect the man who told him that his marriage was wrong. Now, you know God is working when he could use the king to protect John the Baptist. And it says that when he heard him, he actually got happy. And that lets me know, uh, brother deacons and ministers that are in the house, we can have folks that come to our services and they can actually get happy about living in sin. You ain't hearing me today. That, that, I, I'm just in the scripture. Look, look what it said in verse 20. Herod feared John, knowing that he was just and a holy man, and he protected him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. He's living in sin, but yet he still gets happy about the word. This, this is a sad situation today. The word should cause repentance. It should cause change. But some people just get happy and go back to do the same thing. Mother Ruth, you understand what I'm saying? We can scream over and over again. Get right with the Lord. People can hear it. They can clap their hands. They can shout and run. And before they get back to the car, cuss you out. But why? Because we can hear it gladly, know it's even the truth, but not apply it to our heart. What is your price? Uh, look at verse 21. Then an opportune day came when Herod, on his birthday, watch out for those birthdays, gave a feast for his nobles and the high officers and the chief men of Galilee. And when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, it pleased Herod and those who sat with him. The king said to the girl, ask me whatever you want and I will give it to you. What is your price? Now, 
This is amazing. you got to get the picture. Now, don't get too much of the picture, but let's get the picture here. We see here at this point, the birthday comes up. I don't know. Maybe he was 45, 52, 72. Maybe it was his 92nd birthday. I don't know. But whatever it was, he had a birthday celebration. And we know with birthdays, we want to invite those over that we like. Joy, my 18-year-old almost, she wants to invite people over that she likes. Not those that she don't like, but she wants people that respect her to be with her. We see Herod here. He invited all the nobles, the high officials the chief men of Galilee to celebrate his birthday. This is Herod's birthday. Even though he's in the kingship, he's over everybody. He wants a time that people can celebrate what's happening in his life. But now he's got something that's set up. Usually during those celebrations, they would have some type of entertainment. We sing happy birthday, they dance. Uh, we, we clap our hands, they dance. So we, we, we do certain things. We eat ice cream and get, they drink. And, and they had liquor and all of those things so that they could have a real good party. And some of you looking at me like I'm crazy. But before you got saved, you know what your birthday was like. But the fact here, Herod is not. See, he just respects the word, but in that respect, he has not changed and given himself to the change of the word. So now we've got a birthday party that's going on, but please note, just because it was innocent in Herod's life, that Herodias was already setting up an ambush. Yes, yes, the, the thing I find out about sin, it calls you to scheme. It causes you to be uh, uh, devious in your mindset. And, and some of you, you know sin is ruling and you, because you sit right here in church thinking how you're going to get such and such. <laughs> yeah, yes, you are. It, it's been plaguing you. You woke up with ideas. I, I, I know how I can make them suffer and I, I know how I can make them hurt. See, when you've been hurt so much and, and you've gone through hurting people, hurt people. And, and so Herodias, she was hurt. She, she was hurt by leaving her brother Philip and, and she chose to follow this life of sinfulness and now she's been coming in her mind, plaguing her, how can I kill this man? Wow. So now this opportune time comes and, and Herodias' daughter uh, actually dances before Herod. And she danced so well, I don't want to get into too much detail, but she danced so well that it pleased Herod. And not just Herod, but it pleased the men that were sitting around. And the king said to the girl in his haste and his emotion and his excitement and his exhilaration, me whatever you want and I will give it to you. What is your price? What have you given up during a party? I'm just talking to you today. I, I, what, what things have you lowered your standards for? And, and because the party was good, because you got caught up in the emotion, the time, you got stuff that's been tacked on your body because of a party. You, you got names that have been exhilarated into your skin because of a party. You don't even know who they are, but yet that time, it seemed like a good answer. It seemed like what you were supposed to do. It seemed like selling out was the answer. Ask me. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. I found out in my life never to say no. Because there's so many things that I said I'd never do. I found that at the opportune time of pressure and sin, you will submit every time. The only way we can stand is to have Jesus first working in our heart and say, God, not my will, but let thy will be done. What is? Your price. Now, now look at this. Whatever you want, I, I, I will give it. This is dumb. This is crazy. This is ignorant. He's over that area, that district at this point. How can he just give everything to her? How can just a dance uh, inebriate him so much with emotion? That's the way sin is. There's pleasure in sin for a season. Y'all say amen to me. I'm talking to somebody. There's pleasure in sin for a season. I've been to conferences on pornography, and I found out men will leave a good wife to go out of a virtual something. I found out stuff can get in your mind so much that a young girl that's been blessed by her family over and over will walk out of the house, sell everything she has, end up on a life of drugs, all because of this issue of sin. Sin starts out high, but it always ends low. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Herod, wake up. He's in a daze now. He's in a, a ghosting mindset. The enemy is moving. His own wife yeah. is setting him up. Yeah. He also swore to her, 
Whatever you ask me, I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Now, it, it seems to indicate as he's talking through this, he kind of comes to himself. I, okay, I, I said everything, but, but I'll give you half of it. And, and whatever you ask me, I'll do it for you. And, and that's the way, there's always a way out. There's always a word that only has two letters in it, no. It's a very simple, simple word. And some of you, as you sit there and you contemplate your life, think about what no would have done for you. Some of you wouldn't be dealing with what you're dealing with if you could just say no. Some of you would still be on a, a good paying job if you could just say no. Some of you would still be married to a, a good man or a good woman if you would have just said no. That's true. But Herod said yes. Whatever, up to half of my kingdom. So verse 24, it says, So she went out, that's Herodias' daughter, and said to her mother, Mom, what shall I ask? And Herodias said, The head of John the Baptist. Now, this is amazing. It also gives us a picture of family. Uh, sometimes our kids come to us for direction, and we tell them the wrong thing. Amen. I've seen so many uh, uh, families hijacked because we're trying to live our life through our kids. Yeah, we, we're not telling them what the best is for our kids, but we're trying to get back something that we lost. I, I, I've seen fathers, excuse me, play basketball through their sons or their daughters because they never made it. And, and because of this, it's not about their kids. They don't even like basketball. They don't even like baseball. They don't like, but they've been driven so much to achieve that which their parents couldn't. They come to the point and they don't know who they are. This is the same respect. We see the young girl. She's a great dancer. She does what she does is real good, but notice when she asked mom what should happen, it's not about her, but it's all about what moms always want. What is your price? Mom, because I know you care for me, right? Because you love me, right? Uh, King Herod, I, I did a great dance for him. Mama, what should I ask? And she said, I want you to ask for the head of John the Baptist. What does the head of John the Baptist have to do with a dance? What it has to do, uh, Herodias has said before, she's been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. I, I can imagine she was peeking through the side door and she was cheering her daughter on. She was telling her the moves to make because she knew the moves that Herod liked in the first place. There ought to be some amens on the house. She was using her daughter as a puppet to get what she couldn't get. There ought to be some amens in the house. Are you walking with me? She used her daughter to get the head of John the Baptist, and she also used her husband to get caught up in this sin. Verse 25. Immediately, Herodias' daughter came in with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. What is your price? We, we see the price for, for Herod was just a dance. He, he sold out everything in this point. And, and remember, he had protected John the Baptist with all that he could. But now in this, this midst of inebriation with sin, he does something wrong. And, and now the enemy slides in. Be careful. The enemy's waiting for a little hole. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm concerned, and I, I'm going to talk to those that are fathers that are in the house today. I got, I got daughters, and I, I told them I'm, I'm praying for you, and I, I care about you, and I, I used to, brother Dwight, have to just worry about uh, men, you know, just, just ugly boys and men that trying to run a little game. But I said I got to pray for women now. I, this, this sin thing is, is big. I, I, I'm coming. I'm praying for my boys, and, and I'm trying to get them focused in here. And we see here at this point when sin comes in, this girl runs in. And she said, what mama said is give me at once the head of John the Baptist. Now, now we can understand something about Herodias even more. We can see that she just didn't start at this point, but she was running things. Yes, yes, yes. She was a, a strong-willed woman. And, and because of this, notice her daughter did not even question. She didn't say, hey, mom, you know what? I wanted a chariot or I wanted a pony or I wanted this or that. She took what mom said and she ran and said it to uh, the, the Herod, give me John the Baptist. She is asking for murder of a man she doesn't even know. How many times has our sins 
kill somebody that we don't even know. I, I didn't come to talk this much uh, intensity today, but I, I feel the Holy Spirit speak to me, young men, today. You need to realize some of the stuff that you're choosing to do is killing somebody's dream. It, it's snatching them right from them. And that young girl will never be the same because she will never recover from what you did to her. There's some men, their, their dreams have been snatched, young women, because you wouldn't say no. It, it's because now they're dealing with child support over and over again. They will never fly to higher heights because they can't stay out of prison simply because it's a cycle that's killing them. What is your price? There have been people in the church that have loved the Lord with their whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. But because of your sin, talking about them, putting them down, picking on their dress, and picking on their pants, and picking on their hair. They heard that, and they left the church, and now they're sitting at home right now, dying, wanting to have fellowship with the of our sin. I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on the cloud, verse 26. And the king was exceedingly sorry. Yet because of those, and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to refuse her. What's your price? Uh, now John, uh, Herod realized that this is costing John the Baptist's head, and he's sorry. And there have been some of you who have done sin, you're sorry, but it can't fix what you did. Uh, one who's had a DWI and wakes up out of his delirium and realizes that he's killed a family of five in a car that didn't have any harm to him. You can say sorry all you want to, but still the deed is done. This, this whole process here, the king is exceedingly sorry. He's already sorry, but he's already made the oath. And because of this oath, we see in the time, uh, especially in the Old Testament, if you made an oath, you couldn't go back on your oath. But this oath was, was also elevated because he had his friends, he had those that respected him, and because he had said what he said, he couldn't go back. I want to let you know that is a lie of the devil. If you make a mistake, you need to come forth and say, I made a mistake, and please forgive me. I'm telling you, it'll save you so much all that in so much pain. I'm tired of mamas being on News 2 and Fox 8. You know your son is jacked up. He's been jacked up for years. He's no longer a little two-year baby walking around. He's been sitting all this time. And dare you get up on Fox 8 and say he didn't get it. He's been doing it all this time. Why did he do it then? What is your price? Just a few more verses. Immediately, the king sent in an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went, beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a cloud, gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. What's your price? I don't wish for it, but I believe if I had a prophetic word today and I could just Lay out what we've done last year. Yeah, if we had a, could put it up on the TV screen today, yes, yes, yes. we could run our lives. And we could call it as the world turns. Yes, yes. If we could put it out right here in the church service, and we, all those ugly thoughts we had, all those lustful thoughts we had, all those issues that we've said to people behind their back, and all those hateful things that we wish would happen to them. And if we could put it up there from last week, and, and, and some of you, if we went back last month or two years ago or ten years ago or stuff that you hadn't repented of, and we just put it up and we ran it across the, the screen, and if you could see how it affected the dominoes, it, it wasn't just about you. It wasn't about the person that you were talking to, but because you did what you did to that person, they went on their job and said something else to somebody else, and because of that, that person got drunk that night and because they got drunk they had a DWI and they hit somebody that was walking across the street and because of that it affected somebody else's family because that person lost a child without Jesus we see at this point they went into a life of drugism and they went from person to person relationship after relationship and now they're on the corner broken the same person that you pass by that's a panhandler or whatever you think you don't know what they went through if we could see it up on the screen today it could have been because of your sin of 10 years ago that caused them to be in that corner. But are there any witnesses in the house that know that God is a gracious God? Because I'm talking to some folks.
world that know what a porn is like. You that know what what that we're going through and pain from somebody else can do. You know what a price can cost some people in your life. But this final verse today, it said 29, and when his disciples heard of it, they came and took away his corpse and laid it in a tomb. I'm so glad for friends that'll show up even when you're dead. I'm just glad for folks that don't want me. But they love you even to the end and past the end here. Even though Herod has done what he's done and Herodias has John the Baptist's head on a platter, God is not over and God is not finished. Please note, this triggers something in my mind. I thought about John chapter 19 and around that 38th verse. If they can pick up John the Baptist's corpse and they can lay it in the tomb, what hope do we have today? I thought about Jesus the Christ, the anointed one that hung on the cross of Calvary. You know what his price was? It was our lives. Surely we bore our griefs and carried our pain, and yet we did esteem him stricken of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. What is your price? Aren't you grand we serve a Savior? He said, I'll die for him. And I, I know I'm going to have to be bludgeoned. I'll die for them. I know that they'll go their own way and they'll call other people harm. But what about the grace and mercy that the Father is infused inside of me? You know, he died on that cross of Calvary. And they took his body to a tomb. That 38th verse said, Now, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. Please understand if I can just interject. What is your price? We see Joseph of Arimathea. He's a rich man. He's already got his burial policy together. But now he realized something. I feel God is moving on me. I'm going to allow Jesus to lay in my tombs. What is your price? See, some of you have allowed your stuff to get in the way of God's will for your life. But I want to let you know God blesses you to be a blessing. You always got to be in the point. There's some God, that you'll never sleep in, but somebody else will sleep in for you. Please know verse 39, and Nicodemus, who was at first, came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes about a hundred pounds, and then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen, and the spices that the custom of the Jews is to bury. What is your price? We see Joseph of Arimathea, he was worshiping Jesus in secret. We see Herodias, she was all in front wanting to kill John the Baptist, but God allowed it to happen. But I found out when miraculous things happen, those who have been standing in the background will step up. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, but when he saw the horrific death that he died on the cross of Calvary, even the soldier looked at him and said, this must be the Son of God. Nicodemus said, I can't hide anymore. Joseph, can I walk with you? Can I help you carry the body? Verse 40, then they took the body of Jesus, bound it in their strips, and they burning in that tomb and it said now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden in the garden a tomb which had never been laid and nobody had slept there so they laid Jesus because of the Jews preparation day for the tomb was nearby what is your price we can say that he paid a terrible price that was never paid for on the other side if you can still find him there but there's some purchases you make there's always going to be an investment shop there ought to be some amens in the house today there's some investments that I've made that have yielded are actually a negative asset coming to it. Actually a deficit. But there's some stuff that I've invested in. What is your price? I said it's not about sin anymore. But God, I want to follow you. God, I don't understand what's going on right now. But all I know is what the Word said. God, I don't want to do it your place. But God, your Word is true. What I talked about, what is your price today? Jesus is no longer in the tomb. On the third day, he got up with with all power and all glory. Please help Joseph of Arimathea. He got back a huge tomb. Nicodemus saw a risen Savior. The ladies ran to him and began to explain he is Lord. Peter came to himself and now he's a disciple. When you do stuff the Lord's way, people are changed for the good today. Are there any witnesses in the house? Really, I want to stop this right now. But if anybody had a price that was paid for you, and you know if God had not done it for you, you can tell your neighbor you don't know where I'd be at. If Jesus hadn't got a hold of me, I would have had my own tomb today. And there would have been no getting 
up. But I want to let you know early one morning, God woke me up and he had that sin on my mind. But he let me know by the grace and mercy of God that I could believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus was Lord. And I felt like running on the inside. The Holy Spirit jumped up on the inside. Jeremiah said it was like fire all oh, shut up in my heart. If I could just get a few folks here today and say, God, I just want to thank you. Because if it had not been for you on my side, there would have been no hope. What is? Please come to your feet. And when Herodias daughter herself came in a name. And please hear me. And those who sat with him, the king said to the girl, ask me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. Father, you paid a terrible price for us. I want to say on behalf of myself and others, we're sorry, God. We've sold out to the devil so many times. Lord, we're not talking about the things that we don't even know. We're talking about stuff we remember right now. That's clear in our minds. We repent. We're sorry. Thank you for this opportunity to ask of your forgiveness. Thank you for change. What is your price in Jesus' name? As you're on your feet, I'm going to ask our deacons to come around and our ministers and intercessors. This is a serious time. Some of you need to already be coming forth. And if it's not for salvation or deliverance, it's for I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some of you, you, you don't necessarily need to confess to anybody. You just need to get to the altar and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did last night. I'm sorry for something that may have happened 25 years ago, 30 years ago. It's been plaguing you. First John 1 and 9. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you. Cleanse you of all unrighteousness. If you're here today, we want to invite you to the altar. First name of salvation. If you've accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, Pastor, how did I do that? Just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and God has raised him from the dead and said you will be saved. If you've done that right where you're standing, you come forth as an open confession saying, Christ, it's me. Thank you. In spite of my ways, Lord, I know you're the only one that can give me peace. You're the only one. You paid the price for me. If you're here today, we invite you to the altar. Take an invitation. If you're here and you're looking for a church home or family, here, come come by Christian experience or by letter or maybe it's watch here. He's saying, God has spoken to me and uh, Ebenezer is supposed to be my home today. I invite you for today. And again, those who are just stand in need of prayer, you're saying, God, wow, you spoke to me today. I want to be better for you. Anybody want to be better? And God has just pulled at your heart. You realize there was an awesome price that's been paid. I want to invite you to the altar. Maybe you need to intercede for someone else. You want to lift them up for God's grace has been working in their life. You know they should have been dead last week, but God gave them a little bit more time. Would you come? I'm going to give you some time. Would you come and just gather around the altar at this point? God is good. Still room. Come on. Don't be ashamed. We all have sinned.
just be in the attitude of prayer. What is your price? What is your price? these your people that have pressed their way to the altar and are standing around. Lord, would you bless them today? Lord, would you bring a reality of how good you are, how powerful the words that you've given us in the 66 votes to direct our lives on. Lord, would you encourage us and give us the strength to walk in your will and your way. Oh Lord, thank you for another opportunity that we can give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we thank you for your supernatural works in our lives. That even today, you're fixing some stuff that we broke, God. Even today, you're putting back some things, Lord, that we had long lost. Thank you, God, for reminding us of our past that we can repent today. Oh, Lord, cleanse us save us, deliver us. We give you the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. steal, kill, and destroy. That's always been his focus. And they say don't let the devil ride because if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. Some of you know that. He's just not content sitting in the car. He wants to take over. So today, let's give God the praise for all that he's done. Yes, Deacons, our trustees, thank you, thank you. Ministers, uh, whatever you are, manager, your leaders, those who stayed out of work today to come to church, thank you for coming out to Ebenezer Youth Choir.
Thank you.